anyway, we had to go upgrade it and all that. But we got our policy written. And at the very end, I said, now we're going to take care of that calling thing. All right. So every time somebody calls you and they say that they're about with final expense or with life insurance, I want you to just holler out as loud as you can. 727. She says, 727. I said, yeah, 727. Just scream it as loud as you can. And I said, that's code word for don't call. And uh, I said, I promise you, after about a week, they're not going to be calling you anymore. So uh, so it's crazy. And I'm like, so I just made that number out of the blue, right? <laughs> Thanks for joining us this week on the Elite Sales Podcast. I'm happy to be joined in the studio this week by Yoel Ainalem. What's good? We got, we got uh, John Backron with SFL Elite Syndicate. So appreciate you guys coming on. Thanks for having me. We got a couple of remote guests too, but actually I just wanted to start off with a with a quick story that actually ties up. Today we're going to be talking about the relativity of things, mm-hmm. right? And the, it, ma- it made me think about it because, you know, a lot of a lot of things have been happening, you know, business-wise and also personal you know, in terms of a lot of people's like stories and a lot of people th- things that people are going through. And it just kind of made me think, I, ha- I have a buddy that's, that's now passed away. He's, he's, he's been gone for three years, but really close friend of mine, my buddy Vin. Um, but, you know, he, he meant a lot in, in my life. And, I you know, we were younger and I didn't really think too much about it because we were young. We felt invincible, didn't think about dying. And uh, one thing that we used to always do is when we were younger and we were more, I was going to say when we were immature, because I'm still immature. So when I was <laughs> more immature, we used to, uh, we used to, you know, we used to rough house a little bit. We'd walk around just like, hitting each other in the privates and just like slapping each other. Like, like he, I just walked in the room one time. He hit me so hard. Like I just saw stars and out of nowhere and like the whole club, like turned around <laughs> and I was not expecting it, but you know, like I, I love the guy because like he, he also on, on the, on the other side of that, he was like a very like sensitive, caring person. Uh, we, he just kind of did, did that, but we used to get into some like really heated arguments and like, we just both like to troll each other. And then even when we had arguments and then people, People were were corroborating and supporting my side of the argument because it was like pretty obvious because it, it felt like we didn't know if he was trolling or he was being very irrational. Mm. But then, like no matter no matter what happens, no matter what the argument was, and it was, even if it seems very clear cut, at the end he'd be like, "Eh, whatever, it's all relative." <laughs> right? It's it's like it's like your way to diminish someone else's. You know, it could be an ironclad argument that's like completely logical because it, it's yeah. the same as like, yeah, but still. Right, hey, right, right. No, that's that drives me insane. Like everyone, it's like everyone destroys any sort of conversation or argument by saying that. It's like, yeah, most things are all relative. Most things, you know, aren't a hundred percent binary. I, I thought we assumed that you know we could have a conversation and pull things together a little bit. But yeah, I hate people that do that. <laughs> <laughs> that's the end all argument. Yeah, it is oh, what it is. The, the yeah, but still argument. So if you guys don't have yet that in your arsenal, you want to troll somebody, no matter how great of an argument they make, at the end, just boom. Yeah, but still. Yeah, like girl, girls do that sometimes. You're arguing with them and then they're like, well, am I always that way? It's like, no, obviously you're not always that way. But you know what I'm saying? A lot of the times, you know, but maybe that's some personal stuff I got to deal with. That's probably why I'm single. <laughs> so so going back to the it's it's all relative argument. The, the thing is, it's well, it sounds like a joke. And obviously. It's one of those things where it's just like you can you can pretty much end that conversation because you don't really know what to make of it. It's like, it's all relative. However, in practical application, you know, the things that we experience in our business in our daily lives in our relationships or whatever, whatever it may be, the thing is, everything is still kind of relevant, relative, mm-hmm. excuse me. Cause the thing is like, no matter how great you may feel about something, no matter how terrible you feel about something, how hopeless you may feel, how on top of the world you may feel, it's still all kind of relative and it's relative to other people around you is relative to people on the other side of the world. It's relative to even yourself at a different point in your own life. Right. Sometimes it's just temporary too, right? Yeah. It could, you could be feeling that same feeling like five seconds later is totally different now. Right. Yeah. So we, we've all, we've all experienced those moments and, and uh, you know, I, I just went ahead I, before we bring on Darren, I had a really, really funny story. The other day I was on live dials, you know, so I'm, I'm, I'm on there with the team, just, just, making mistakes like everybody else and just dialing and, and just, you know, unmuting myself, having my camera on, just letting people watch. There's one that I called this one lead and Oregon, 
<laughs> this is the one I came into their office about. Oregon beef, but right? Pub's late in Oregon. And then as I'm on, I'm on speakerphone. So like, she's like, I'm like, hey, I'm about calling about that, that uh, response you filled out. So I'm just getting back to you so I can get this information out to you. And then she's like, are you working? And I'm like, I don't understand the question. And she's like, are you working? And I'm like, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm working. I'm, I'm trying to get this information out to you. I'm trying to, I'm trying to help you out here. She's like, but if you're working, that means I'm working. And you're calling me while I'm working. And, blah, blah, blah. and she gave me all this attitude. And then I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, all you have to say was you're working. I would see when I can call you back. <laughs> so like for me, I was like, I was like, it's such an odd way to like to phrase it. And then, and then you know, she got upset, she hung up, she, you know, whatever. Like later on that evening, 3 a.m. in the morning, I happen to be up. It's 3 a.m. My phone starts ringing. And then I'm like, I looked at the number, I'm like, oh, I, this is that lady. So I'm I'm like, whatever it is. This can't be good. I'm not, she's not a client of mine. So I don't have that obligation to actually pick it up. And then I'm, I was like, I was like, I'm just going to put it aside. Immediately she, the, the, it stops ringing and then she texts me, F you. <laughs> <laughs> and so like, for me, I was like, I, I looked at it. I'm like, you know what? God bless you. I hope you have a great day. Hey, and I, like I, I just replied back that way. I like that. And the thing is like, at that moment, like I could have been upset, but I really wasn't upset. I actually thought it was kind of funny. That's funny. And I actually thought I really feel bad for it because I'm like for her to be that upset up to after all this time. And like, I wasn't trying to be rude with her when I was actually on the phone with her, but she was, it, it bothered her so much that she carried this burden and this anger throughout the day to the point where she couldn't even go to sleep. And she felt like she, needed to, she compelled her to reach out to like try to angrily text me or angrily call me. And then when that failed, she had to like text me. And uh, so like, this is how everything is so relative because like, yeah, maybe an older, like an older version of myself, a younger me would have been like, all right, I'm going to blow this lady up. I'm, 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 I'm going to find a way to mess with her so bad. But like now it's all relative because I'm like, Albert, my life's great. Yeah, can but, you post her? Can you share her number with all of us so we can? <laughs> <laughs> no, I no. wish, I wish her nothing but the best because it feels no, like she needs it. it's all relevant. <laughs> she needs it. Like I, like, obviously we post a lot of content. I post content with my, my pages too. And like, you just see so many people just like hate and just like be disrespectful and just like low blows. It's always the low blows with people that have no profile picture either. Like, I don't know if that's like a coincidence. I don't think so. And like you just one, I, whenever I see those comments, I'm happy because I'm like, nice engagement, right. engagement pushes the algorithm. I get instantly happy. I start smiling literally. And uh, <laughs> the second thing I'm like, why are you so mad? Like, what's wrong? Like, I want to give them a hug. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just a troll though not like troll like them. Like, I'm just like, I just, I feel bad for them, you know? So Yoel, if you guys don't know, post, post he creates, he creates the content. He posts, he posts all the, uh, the reels and whatnot and the, the content that we have. You got a really funny one of, of a comment. Right? I never read the comments. I never, I, I hate hearing myself. I hate looking at myself, but <laughs> he shared a really funny one. Yeah. So, <laughs> so there's a guy, there's a, uh, so Everyone always says he looks like uh, Elon Musk. So one person commented, Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, it was that funny. <laughs> and of course, no profile picture. Wait, do people say I look like Elon Musk? Yeah, a lot of people do. I'll, I'll do you not know that? Maybe someone's t- told no, no, me that. I haven't told you that. A lot of people say you look like Elon. You remind me of Elon, too. Humor-wise, I, I get it. I, yeah. I see this in the But in terms of looks, I've never heard it. But you know what? I'll take it. Confuse our bank accounts, please. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just thought I thought that was kind of funny when you all shared it. It's like it doesn't why why should it bother me? Because I don't know this person. This person and who knows if this person's even serious. We did, he didn't post his real picture. I don't I don't know, but he probably wasn't serious. He just thought it was funny. Yeah. And if you thought it was funny, I agree. <laughs> But but yeah, I mean every, everything's so relative and everything everything like we just need to take a step back sometimes and evaluate where we are in our lives and why we feel a certain way because however strongly you may feel about that particular situation that you're currently you're currently residing in, it could be drastically different even a couple minutes later. Mm-hmm. So I think I think we need to take stock sometimes and just not overreact or don't not to overreact in a way which is going to be have a negative impact on you or your relationships. Or the people that you care about, because in the end, what does it all matter? <laughs> it's all relative. <laughs> but, but, so speaking of relativity and speaking of something that actually genuinely does matter, because all this was kind of 
you know, in fun, good natured fun. Um, you know, have, have someone, someone that's going to come on, just want to share. And I care a lot about this person. You know, he's always been great. And my heart really goes out to Darren because his father that I know he loved very much just recently passed. And uh, I know it's been, I know it's been something that you've been, you and the family have been dealing with. So, you know, why don't you share with us and let us know how everything's going and how you feel. I will. Thank you, Albert. Appreciate everybody on there. Um, hey, before I do that, though, I want to, uh, on a lighter note, okay, this is on uh, relevant to what you were talking about. So I'm going to share a funny story with you. Uh, I think you guys will get a kick out of it. I might have shared it one time before, but we got new people on here. So um, I had a lady one time I called her and she was like, you're like the 10th person that called me. And uh, I'm like, well, you know, about this. And I'm like, ma'am, it's okay. Do you want me to you want me to take care of that and have people quit calling you? She said, please do that. And I said, OK, I'm going to have to come out to your house and uh, I'm going to have you sign this form. And uh, she said, OK, I said, you're going to be home tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. She said, yes. I said, perfect. I've got your address at so and so. And and she said, OK, and uh, I'll be there. So I show up at her house at 10 o'clock in the morning. She's sitting outside in a lawn chair and uh, by her, in her on her um, garage, by her garage. And uh I'd walk up to her and I did pull up a chair that she had over there by her and I just sit down and we're just talking, you know, and she was nice to me. And, uh, um, she said, you got that form for me to fill out. And I said, well, I got one better, but first of all, we're going to talk about why you actually filled that form out in the very first place. And then, and then we'll do that. And, uh, we just started talking and, uh, she said, you know, and long story short, I sold her a policy. I nice. got our future of Omaha policy. And uh, wrote it out, got it, got it approved, right them on the spot. And uh, anyway, we had to go a graded and all that. But we got our policy written. And at the very end, I said, now we're going to take care of that calling thing. All right. So every time somebody calls you and they say that they're about with final expense or with life insurance, I want you to just holler out as loud as you can. 727. She says 727. I said, yeah, 727. Just scream it as loud as you can. And I said, that's code word for don't call. And uh, I said, I promise you, after about a week, they're not going to be calling you anymore. So uh, she said, OK, I'll do it. And then she <laughs> said, do you mind if I share that with my friends? I said, no, go ahead. Let them know. And uh, so it's crazy. And I'm like, so I just made that number out of the blue, right? <laughs> after, about week, call- <laughs> after about a week, they're going to quit calling anyway, right? So anyway, <laughs> took care of that. And she thinks that I've got this code word for don't call me. And hey, it was fun. I had a blast. But bottom line is, I went and saw the lady, sold her a policy, even though she had told me no. And I found a way. How did I find a way? I said, hey, I'm going to come get them to make stop making phone calls. And it got me into the house and got me to where I can write a policy. It was all fun. That's and, very uh, resourceful. You, you had me going with the 727 because at first I was like, is that a thing? I'm like, what is, <laughs> where's that from? But What? What's crazy is I told Landon, I said, uh, I can just see now I'm going to start calling all these other people and they're going to start saying 727 every time I call. <laughs> like the word's going to get out. So anyway, I hope I'm glad it never caught on. I'd have been screwed. Um, that's like, that's like a tip. So, no, nah, it's just fun, though. You got to have fun in this business. If you don't have fun, man, it'll eat your lunch. But if you have fun with it, just enjoy it. And uh, I, I really do. I enjoy getting on the phone. I've got about three weeks of wrestling left and then I'm going to get on those live dials and uh, you got to get here. This Oki Oki selling some stuff. It'd let's be go. Love it. So, <laughs> love it. Um, so let's talk about what's been going on in my life. Uh, I appreciate everybody that, that had been saying at prayers and, and sending me messages. And, you know, my dad for about the past four months has, has uh, been in hospitals and um, it was getting worse and worse. And, um, I spent a lot of time with, with my dad over the last few months, but especially the last last two and a half to three weeks, I spent every day with my dad. And um, we had to take him off of uh, life support and put him on what we call comfort support. And I got I had the opportunity to spend with him, but every day, you know, it just progressively got worse till we lost him last Thursday. And uh, my dad was an incredible man. Um, spent the last 45 years in the ministry. He was a pastor of, of a church for 45 years. When he finally retired, he evangelized and he, he preached until the day he, he passed. And uh, he was an incredible man. Uh, he was a visionary. And I like to tell people that he, he taught me to believe that, that I could do anything I want to do if you stick to it and work your tail off and work hard at it. 
And uh, my dad was like that. He was a visionary. He built churches. He didn't just go and pastor for 45 years. He would go and start a church and build it up and then go on and take another smaller one and build it up until they got so big. And he did that for like nine different churches during those two years. And uh, he was a builder, but he was a visionary. And uh, everything that, you know, I always tell people, if I could be half the man my dad was, I'll be a pretty good man. Because he was, he was just an incredible person. I love him. Um, but let me tell you what Family First Life has done for me, guys. It gave me the opportunity to spend the last month easy with my dad and not work. I mean, like, rarely did I work, guys. I didn't. But you know what? I didn't have to, and I didn't miss it. Um, God has given me the opportunity, um, and, and, and myself, I worked hard, you know, uh, but to build a team, uh, listen, I've got some incredible leaders on my team, Trisha, Trisha Brown, um, different, different one, Alicia and, and, um, um, Derek uh, is, on, is on the team and, and, um, uh, Helen, uh, Jones and and I mean I've got I go on and on uh people that that said I'm going to take over Darren don't worry about it you stay and worry about your father worry about your family and you take care of that and we're going to make sure that your business keeps growing and and keeps working and and uh, they were doing that they'd get on our group me and they would say hey don't reach out to Darren he's doing this but reach out to us and they took over and and I appreciate good leadership but I think part of being a good leader is establishing that within your your own group and um, it was powerful to watch it, my team still work. Um, during that process, Albert, I was still getting leads. And you guys know I, I, I don't go cheap anymore on leads. I get those good, the good leads. Um, but I, during that time, those leads still kept coming in. But I was giving them to agents, and they were working on a 50-50 split. Or well, they were still making a lot of money. Just the last two days, I think I made – helped out a couple How many families helped? I'm Helped out a couple families. families, two and a half families, <laughs> last two days, and not one of it was something I did. It was my agents doing that for me, but it's still, you know, I made as much money in my last two days as as I did about two weeks worth of when I was teaching, and I didn't do a thing for it, but helped give my leads to an agent that helped, and he was grateful because he was able to to do it without a lead cost. And uh, so those are things that Family First Life has allowed me to do. Um, is, is just to be able to spend time with my family during that deepest, uh, darkest times uh, to be there for them. And, and thank God for something like Family First Life that allowed me to do that. I just, I just want to touch on something you said. You said you made as much money as you did when you were teaching and then you didn't do anything for it. I, I disagree because it's not that you didn't do anything. It's just you took the time to set up this agency, to treat your people right, to put them in a position to win, to establish those relationships. and those people came through for you because you came through for them. So, you know, that's that symbiotic relationship. So, I mean, you've, you've earned that part. Yep. yep. Same, same, uh, as, as leaders, as you become leaders, you've got to do the same thing and, and, uh, you know, start putting good people in place and, and give them a position of leadership and that they're going to do the same for you. And that's, that's important in this game is that you, you learn to trust people. And uh, some people, some you don't, but some you do, and uh, and put more on them as they go and help them, guide them, and and establish. Albert been incredible, the best leader I can imagine. But he uh, gave me that autonomy to kind of grow and and to do this. And and now that you know, I think he's got a pretty good leader in myself, and I'm doing the same thing. Um, I went through some time. I didn't do very much, and Albert didn't push me. He never called me and said, "Hey, what's going on? Why aren't you?" You know, or or whatever. He allowed me that time to, to to get through where I needed to get, and uh, you know today I'm I'm grateful for what he he allowed me to do. Um, one thing Albert and I was talking about was my mom. So my mom is um, she's she's pretty healthy and she's going to live quite a while, right? Um, but she's not making anything on Social Security hardly at all, and. Uh, now she's going to get my dad's social, but it wasn't a lot. As you know, you don't pay in a lot of that being a pastor. Um, but she's going to lose a big part of her income. And uh, I told my dad, I said, listen, dad, I want you to know something. You'll never have to worry about mom. I will always be there for her and we'll take care of mom. And uh, I told mom and I said, listen, don't worry about it. You, you've got this. And uh, so I'm going to take over mom's payments for her. 
uh, it's just going to be part of the thing that I, I just know I need to do. I'm going to I'm going to step up and be the man. Well, having said that, um, the day after the funeral, uh, Monday, I got busy on the phone, right? And I started making. I went out the last couple of days and helped uh, about three and a half families, and uh, last two days, and and uh, just something I have to do. So I know I can't slack off now because I've got one more thing that I, I know I've got to take care of. And, uh, and I'm going to do it. So, yeah. This whole thing's big, bigger than money. It's bigger than us, right? Say it again. This thing's bigger than money. Oh. It's bigger than us. Yeah. I mean, so much. It's it's so much bigger than, than just going out and making commissions, right? It's a it's all about about doing, helping families and doing things right. And I think about it. Um, Dad took care of mom. You know, whenever come time for that, for the funeral, when we sat down, this was a blessing. Um, we sat there with about a couple of my family members and uh, funeral director walks in there and, and uh, he says, uh, no one even knew this except me. I know dad had talked to me, but he said, your dad took care of this a long time ago. And uh, he and your mom and uh, the funeral's paid for. And um, I had, I went and added an extra thousand dollars worth of stuff because I wanted some extras, but uh, like it didn't have to, but we did. And I just put on my card and said, I want I want this and this as well. And uh, so we did that. Uh, but the funeral was paid for. Dad was a planner. And then my mom had a, a it wasn't a lot, but it was $25,000 policy on top of that that she had. So she's going to get that $25,000 um, and uh, had that for quite a while as well. But dad was a planner. You know, he thought about these things. And that's going to help my mom out uh, immensely. And uh, so I'm telling you, life insurance is important. If you don't think anyone's seen the value of it, I got to see it firsthand and uh, why it's important. And uh, I, I can promise you that, you know, just an eight or nine thousand uh, dollar burial policy that he had that took care of that was it was huge. Uh, my family, all my my sister and my my uh, relatives that was in the room with us, they just kind of looked at me and smiled, you know, like that's that's kind of a big deal because no one knew how that was going to. I knew I was going to take care of it one way or another. but. But um, it wasn't even an issue. So uh, that was pretty cool. That's cool. What a blessing to be in that position. Absolutely. Yeah. So, hey, Darren, I, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing, you know, a little bit about your life. And look, it's it's uh, it's in a in a moment in which obviously there's there's the the sorrow of losing a loved one like that. But the thing is, the perspective in which you share and then the, the position, the way the way that you look at it, I mean, it's it's really uplifting because. You know, you're you're blessed to be in that position to be able to take care of the ones around you. And you've you've in a, even in a difficult time, you are able to find a way to see the good in it. Oh, absolutely. I, I look forward and I've been on communicating with my my rock star family. And uh, I told them, I said, now let, let 2023 begin. Right. So now now it's we're all in. Can't wait for convention next week. Um, we've got the big condo we're going to be at. I just found out today. My, I rented a big red Jeep, right? So we're going to go tear up the town. <laughs> watch, <laughs> watch out, Miami. Check this out. I get an email today saying your Jeep has been canceled. I'm like, oh. what? They said your Jeep's been canceled. It was in a wreck. I'm like, no way. So I uh, had to get it. There wasn't another Jeep available, so I got a Mercedes. And uh, so I'm in a Mercedes. Uh, that's what a, what a downgrade. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Look at you, Darren. Okay. All right, well. I'm looking forward to seeing you over there. It's it's yeah, it's gonna sure. be great. And we'll we'll get a chance to catch up. Appreciate you coming on, Sharon. And we love you, Darren. Love you too, man. Thank you, everybody. See you next week. Yep. All right. Well. So I mean that's that I mean that's a that's a big uh big example of like how some people could be absolutely devastated by which I mean right. I'm sure Darren's feeling a certain kind of way, but you know, if if you're prepared for it and you've you've you tried to enjoy that time that you do have as much as you can and you're grateful, I mean. It's all relative. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Especially in death. Like, are you mourning or you're celebrating their life? Right. So it's, it's a great take from Darren's side that he's celebrating his dad's accomplishments, what he's done, what he's set up. So it's, it's a good relative side to things. Right. And it's, it's always, gonna, it's always going to be sad, but the thing is, it's how much, how much uh, you don't want to, re- you don't want to regret. You don't want to have, you don't want to have regret that, that, that pain of regret of being like, I didn't get to do this and get to say this, whatever, whatever it may be. So uh, well, moving on to moving on to our next guest, Micah Durkers on on a 
lighter note on a uh, on a on something about positivity because I, I was having a nice conversation with him the other day. Mike, are you there? Loud and clear, Albert. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yep. We can hear you great. So, Micah Durkers, vice president of FFL Exceptional, one of the most knowledgeable guys. He he, he knows product knowledge inside and out. You know, I, I I turn to him sometimes in terms of certain things, and he's like an encyclopedia. But um, thank you for hopping on. Just thank you, Albert. Thank you. Appreciate it as always. All right. So you and I were having an interesting conversation, and and everything was everything was geared around you wanting to grow. So tell us how that conversation went, just to give us the general beats of it. Yeah. So I'm going to touch on a lot of different things here because I think they're all appropriate. And I hope that anybody who's seriously thinking about building or growth in general, you know, can find something useful here. So I came into this agency about two years ago. And um, I was under somebody at the time who had been at the agency for three years ish. And, uh, you know, the, the team that uh, this individual had created really never did more than. Then I was seeing other agents. Families, around right? 50, 60 families. Yes. 50, 60 <laughs> families a month. And I was kind of like, okay, well, well, I don't want to be like that. Right. (laughs) It was always a very clear example of, you know, what can I do to do better, to do more, to know something more, to design a new system, to work more, to work smarter. Okay. That's a mindset I've always had. You know, it might be just part of my personality, but I do think that when you are in business, you know, Tony Robbins talks a lot about this, that when you're in business, there's really two options that you're going towards. One is growth, right? Business is getting better. You're serving more families. You're increasing your profits, new products, et cetera. Or you're dying, right? Your business is slowing down. You're serving fewer families. You're having more drama, more problems, et cetera, et cetera. Not only do I think that's true in business, but I would argue that's true in life. And I think that's very important to hold as kind of a personal value. You know, how are you growing, developing personally? But when it comes to my my agency and my team, that's kind of the focus that I am holding, right? You know, what, what about this team is working well? What's growing? How are people getting better? More people are making more money. That's good. I like to see that. And how am I on guard for things that have you know, cause me to slow down, like roll up debt or, you know, agents who aren't a good fit for the agency. How do I, how do I check that and make sure that doesn't derail my attention? Because at the end of the day, you know, I am here to build a business and to grow. And I think that the resources that we have are truly powerful. You know, Um, there are a lot of people, agency owners at other companies who are at, you know, 90, 100, 110%, 120 max. And we have some people joining at those levels, you know, and with the carrier diversity that we have, the lead diversity, the the bonus diversity, everything, I do think, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, I do think it is selfish not to share the opportunity. And so I was kind of talking to Albert, okay, you know, what do I really need to focus on in my next year? Because I don't want to be complacent, right? Like in many respects, I would almost rather quit FFL than just have an agency that stays the same. Because you see there are so many agencies and I'm not, granted, we all have the exceptions of the agencies that blow up very quickly, but for the most part, you know, average agencies are growing pretty steadily, right? You know, Sean implemented the the rule for the bonus that, you know, an agency should be growing at 5% month, month, month. It's really not that much when you, when you think about it, you know, I look at my own agency and we grew 4X, so that's 400% in a year, right? Now it's a little bit harder to scale that up because we were a little smaller going to where we were now, but 5% a month is 60% in a year. It's very doable, right? Um, and I have seen plenty of other agencies that have chosen to be stagnant, you know, who, you know, maybe get up to their max contract, 140, 145. They kind of sit there, they live off of their bonus, they live off of their overrides, life's good for them. 
but their people really aren't making a ton of money or if they are they're just kind of hovering around and that's not the culture that i want that's not the culture that speaks to me and that's not what i want to focus on for myself and my agency and so you know i'm i'm encouraging all my team to be there at convention to really network and to really work because i don't want you know a culture where people just come in and stagnate and then end up end up dying right most of society in a very literal sense works a w2 job 50 60 40 30 70 grand a year pays most of that in bills hardly saves anything for retirement retires and then dies i mean that's just kind of how it is unfortunately that's not the path that i want to take um and i don't want to take a stagnant path for my agency and so growth and, and development and urgency has been very important to me and that's why you know every single day i'm you know on zoom i'm dialing I'm touching base with clients, helping agents, closing deals, whatever I can. And I'm not going to allow myself to just sit there. And, and even if, you know, when I get my agency to a higher level, I'm not going to sit there and just, oh, well, life's good. I've got a nice fat bonus. I got a nice fat overrides. I'm not interested in that. You know, Sean talks a lot about on the leadership calls. Hey, well, when we started, 90% of managers were writing business. Now it's like 10% of managers writing business. I forget the exact stats, but it's so easy to get complacent. It really is. And I would just say to everybody, be vigilant about that. Really be vigilant about that, whether it's your finances, your relationship, you know, relationships will will fall apart because people will get bored. You know, cheating happens. Oh, I needed some variety. I needed something new. There are a lot of parallels to a business. So I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, Albert. Feel free to stop me and ask me no, questions. Good. But Keep going. I think that's just so... It's so important because a lot of a lot of people do have a genuine need for security, financial security, emotional security, um, you know, shelter, bank account, you need a card, get around, whatever. You do need some security. I'm not knocking on that, but some people get so comfortable in their pursuit pursuit of security that they don't pursue their goals, their dreams, their vision, and, and their passions. And, and that's again, that's just not the type of person I am. And so if if that's anything that you've seen or encountered. I would seriously talk to somebody about it. You know, there are people here to help and it doesn't mean it's been easy. You know, I've had tens of thousands of roll-up debt that I've had to deal with, you know, in the last six months. That's not, that's not fun, but that's like this compared to what the potential is. And so that's where I'm focused. So I'll pause there for a second. And so that's all relative, right? I mean, right. right. I mean, you know, you've, you've gone through different phases of dealing with this debt. I've been, I've been, in close intimate conversations with you about that. So, I mean, I, I hear sometimes like, you know, you're a, a little bit alarmist about it. And then, then you go back, you go back to homeostasis and you're like, <laughs> okay, all right. How do we deal with this next? Right. So mm-hmm. it's, it's all, it's all relative in how we deal with it. But let me ask you about something that you, the way that you phrased something earlier, you said some teams, some people get up to a certain point and they choose to stagnate. So in your opinion, which I, I agree with, I, it's a choice. Why do, why do you think they choose to stagnate like that? Because I think for a lot of people, and I identified this in myself as well last year, it's probably more money than they've ever made. Right. A lot of people don't know what to do with that because they were never raised in an environment where people had that financial abundance. Um And they almost get focused on, you know, well, how do I make sure I don't screw it up instead of focusing how I can grow it, right? So it becomes selfish at the end of the day. It's all about them. And I do believe that that's the case. I mean, I do believe that that's the case. And I think that it's it's a very clear choice to do that. I mean, it's not hard to, and and I say this because I've spoken to a lot of agents at a lot of other agencies. It's not hard to take your people's calls you know, to show up on Zoom with them to work and to hopefully see them on the issue page report. You know, it's, I would feel very strange personally, and I'm sure my team would as well, if they didn't see me on the issue page report. You know, I, I don't think that's cool. You know, I'm just, that's me. Um, obviously, up until a point, you know, Sean talks about, hey, well, if you're below a million a month, you should be on the issue page report. And so I always want to be there as, as the leader because I, I do believe you know, what one has done in this business all can do, you know, I'm, I'm nothing special, you know, I, 
I was literally bottom of the barrel at my old company, literally. So if I can somehow learn some skills, figure some stuff out, call some carriers, call some people, somehow put something together that makes me some money and I can teach other people how to do the same, why wouldn't I? Yep. So yeah, I do think it's a choice. People get comfortable, they get complacent, life's good, you know, but it's not good if you're not growing. That's my belief. It's funny. We were just talking about that at lunch. We were, talk, we were talking to Clifton about this. And he's, talk, he's talking about like, I don't understand why people don't get in shape. How come they're not healthy? And he's like, he's like, it's like, it's the same amount of energy to go either direction, to either be healthy or to stay unhealthy. Right. right? Mm-hmm. And for me, I'm like, no, I think it's a lot easier to just stay not doing anything because it requires literally no calories aside <laughs> from just existing and just right. barely staying alive. But the thing is, what gets people to move is they become so uncomfortable that it forces them to move. That discomfort becomes so so intense and so strong right. that it actually pushes them to move. And I think, yeah, you're right. A lot of times people get to a certain point, they get comfortable, and then it's just like, all right, I'm making money. Like, there's more that I'm used to making, and I'm just going to chill. Here. Yeah. Right. And and you got to, I think you got to figure out what, what motivates you, right? Like, some people are pulled towards their goals or pushed by their fears, right? I just made up that quote. I don't know if someone pushed away from pain. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'm going to coin that. Uh, But (laughs) yeah. So for me, it's always, I always try to brainwash myself into fear, right? Like if you don't do this, this will happen. You know, like I always try to tell my story, like those types of stories, other people might be different. Oh, I got to get this goal. I want to buy this car. I want to get this house. They might have a vision board. They might have a photo on their, whatever it may be. Right. I want that, that desire pushes them. So everybody's different, I think. And you got to figure out what drives you. Is it growing a big agency because you want the money or whatever, the freedom, whatever it may be, or is it dang, if I don't get, if I don't do this, if I don't make this happen, you know, my family won't be able to, you know, go to the schools I want them to go to. If I don't make this happen, then X, Y, and Z, you got to, it could be both too, you know, at the end of the day. So you got to figure out what pushes you. Yeah. And Mike, you've, you've always been tremendous about getting on with your guys doing live dials and, and uh, you know, leading by example and, you know, just participating in all the different things that are going on. Um, recently, I mean, you came, you came on a hopped on. I, I started getting into the field again myself and start, started getting on live dials and selling. Cause I mean, I got to a certain point where I'm like, I'm tired of not growing at the level that I want to be. So I can't put it on anybody else. The only person I can control is myself. So why don't I get back on here and, and dial? So you, you were on, you were on a couple of times when I was out on there watching the script, fumbling through, like, how did that make you feel to see me on there? Well, it, it made me feel good. Um, because I, I do think, you know, it, it was time for that to happen, Albert, you know, um, it's been a while since I've seen you on the leaderboard and, and now we're starting to see you again. That's great to see it really. So it made me feel proud to be part of the agency. Um, it also made me realize that you know, you don't have to have a, you know, you don't have to be the best person on the phones to be able to help somebody, right? right? You can be rusty, you can get back into it, and you can still, you know, follow the system, which is very clear and very simple. You get leads of people who want information. You talk to them. You don't scare them off in the first 10 seconds. You at least try to be nice and help them. And they'll be reasonably nice to you if you're doing your best for them and you don't sound like someone who's completely ignorant or rude, right? And if you put in enough work, law of large numbers will happen. Now, obviously, as you tweak your scale and you tweak your verbiage and you tweak your tone, the ability for you to convert leads is going to increase. But it was really, it was really good to see. And it's it's something that, you know. I wish more managers in the agency would do, quite frankly, you know, so I appreciate that. And I I think it's a great example. And I think it's a long term way for us to really be elite in our name and and build that momentum in our volume. Well, it was was kind of funny because I'm like, I'm not I'm not entirely seeking your validation. But but the reason why I I was curious as to what, what you thought, because. If you guys, for those of you that don't know, Michael likes to challenge me on a lot of stuff and in a good way. And he likes to challenge me because like, you know, he's like, hey, how come we don't do things this way? How come we don't do things this way? And like, I understand, I understand where he's coming from because he wants to grow. All of our conversations have always been centered around how does he grow? And and I appreciate that. I think that I think that's a great quality to have. But sometimes, you know, he's very direct with certain things and certain things that he he'll like 
more than just insinuate. He'll, he'll kind of he'll kind of put it in some way. And I'm like, is this guy messing with me? Like, it, really, it really makes me question sometimes. Is he trolling? Is he trolling, or is he is he like is this some kind of like super backhanded way of like coming at me? But you know, the thing is, I I, I take a step back because I recognize it's all relative, right? And I'm like, what does he really want out of this this interaction that we're having? You know, so like I have to take a step back and try not to get angry at certain points and be like, okay, where is he coming from? Does he make a point? Is there something on me? Is something I can change? And you know, so you do challenge me in a very good way in that respect. So I so I I was just kind of curious. I'm like, I'm sure this is something Mike has thought about before. Like, how come Albert doesn't do this? How come Albert doesn't do that? And then you know, I just wanted to, to kind of gauge what your mm-hmm. thoughts were on that. <laughs> right. And and again, you know, it's we all have things that we're we're doing and that we're very busy with, right? Some people are just naturally better, you know. On the phone, some are better in person, some are better recruiters, right? Um, we had Michael Sandman on our agency call. You know, the kid helped 212 families last month. And um, we were talking to him about telesales. And I said, you know, did you do any of it over the phone? He said, no, I can't sell over the phone to save my life. And I thought that was so interesting from somebody who's, you know, broken the company record for most families helped in a month. And I asked him too, it wasn't just, you know, one big IUL or annuities, but it was, it was like 150 applications, you know, which is crazy. And so, yeah, I mean, even if we might have our questions, you know, what's this person doing, what that person is doing, it's good to understand what they are doing, if they're doing anything. And if they're not, Hey, what's going on? What are you using your time for? You know? And I would expect that any of my downlines around the call would ask me the same thing because like today, I had something come up and I had to go run to the mechanics. I wasn't on Zoom for the full day. So that's what happened, right? But I'm got to close early. Are you working on the car? I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, no, but yeah, I, I, I appreciate that, Albert. And I, I do, you know, I, anything I come from when it comes to my business or the agency or whomever, I'm coming from a place of how can I help everybody grow? Now that might look different or sound different to different people and that's okay, right? Nobody sees 100% eye to eye perfectly, but that's where professional communication, dialogue and exchange come in where we can help to negotiate some of that stuff, which I think we do, you know, for the most part pretty nicely and which is an important skill to have in any business period. Yeah. Well, just to clarify when I said most of our talks have been centered around you growing, I didn't mean that in the pejorative. I think I think that's actually a good thing because yeah, your job should be for how do you help yourself grow? And like my job is, as a leader is how do I help my guys grow? So we're both talking about the same thing. It's just sometimes the approach is it's a, the the approach or the idea is a little bit different. So I mean, that's right. where sometimes we kind of have a little bit of a you know spirited dis, discourse about it. You know, right? But, Absolutely. I mean, and, and, all, and all this actually. Sorry, go ahead, please. Well, I was going to say that's good because I am, you know late-ish 20s. I hate even saying that, but I guess it's true. And I realized that I'm very ignorant to a lot of things and I'm inexperienced in a lot of things. And there are people who know a lot more, who've done a lot more, who've been in the business a lot more, who've made a lot more money than me, who've done way more things than me. And and yes, I'm confident in what I know and I try to be very well researched. And at the same time, I try to be open-minded because, you know, what the hell do I know? I don't know anything about hiring staff. You know, I don't know anything about Bitcoin trading. I don't know anything about doing car repairs, but I like to learn and I'm always going to ask. Yeah, this, this whole thing's done because Mike came to me with a proposition and said like, hey, how about we do this? And then I was like, I, I'm like, is it number one? My first thing, my first reaction was, is he messing with me again? <laughs> but then after that, I'm like, I'm like, no, no, I think he's coming from a genuine place. I mean, I've, I've known him this long now and I've, we've had enough conversations, but I'm like, okay. So I started to kind of think about it and I'm like, the thing is it would impact because there are certain metrics in which us as leaders, we need to make sure that we're all pulling our own weight, that we're all continuing to grow, continue to push our own growth and not be entirely dependent on somebody else carrying our team for us. That's, we need to carry our own water. Mm-hmm. So like for, for me, I was like, okay, so if I thought about it, I started working out. I'm like, this would actually kind of throw off the proportion for Marlon for one, because he's, he's your, he's your upline manager. So it could, it, it'd be, be too big of a percentage potentially if we, if we started going that route and then Marlon and Clifton would be too, too big of my percentage. And then, you know, it would look like I'm not doing anything, you know, mm-hmm. which 
So I mean, like if if there was a way, so the thing is whenever you and I'm a businessman, so I'm like, I'm like, if it helps everybody win, like it's got like mm-hmm. it's gotta be worth considering. But then I, I I look at it like, okay, now there's too many other people to consider in this equation. So I'm like, I didn't say absolutely no, I just said not right now or not the way that's sure. currently formed. So if if you have other ideas and you know you can find a find a way to be mutually beneficial. And this is the this is the the cusp of our business or the uh, the, the crux of our business. Everything that we do, it's like we have something to offer. We, pre, we present it to somebody, see if it helps both both sides. If it doesn't, go back to the drawing board, figure out how we can better present it. Yeah, and even better too, like these suggestions or these conversations, whether you're coming from from your experience, sometimes it may or make it may come off in the wrong way, but it's it's for the beneficial of the company or yourself, right? right. So that's that's the good thing about it, and. I understand. Um, sometimes I would come up to Albert and ask him some questions, but I would come from my experience and how direct I would approach it with, which can come off different from his relative of his perspective. But at the end of the day, these are good discourse because we're talking about business, right? So if for any agent that hasn't had these conversations, it's good to have. At the very least, you might be asking the most ignorant basic question, but now you're learning about more things about the business. Yeah. And I think to take that a step further, you know, one of the videos that really helped me in my closing was by Grant Cardone. It's a pretty simple one on YouTube. You guys can look it up. But basically, it's a back and forth dialogue with some of his sales reps about you know, what do we need to do to make a decision today, right? Where are you? Are you on a scale of one to 10? Oh, I'm on a six. Okay. Why are you at a six? Okay. What would it take for you to be a 10? What's missing, right? How can I help you meet that, right? And I think that that's a very valuable skill to have is just how to negotiate because it's something you're going to have to do no matter what, right? Are you with a client? Oh, I'm not interested in, you know, a whole life policy. Okay. Well, what about a term? right? Is that something that would be better suited to your needs? Okay, cool. Um, And I think that applies to your upline as well. I think that, you know, if you need something from your upline, you should go negotiate with them because they're there to help you, or at least they should be, right? Or even if you need something from somebody else at FFL who sees who who you like or that you see something, go go talk to them and negotiate something with them, Mm -hmm. you know, or reach out to one of the integrity partners and pick their brains, you know, negotiate something with them. You know, I I was talking with um, Eric Schmidt, who's the nearest integrity partner in my local area. And I worked out a little deal with him for some leads for some of my agents, and I'm going to cut him a certain percentage, you know, it's win-win, you know? So I'm, I'm not afraid to, to ask for things and negotiate and, and give as well. You know, if you're going to ask, you have to be willing to give. Um, but I would encourage everybody to do that at convention. You know, you're going to be sitting around people who make a lot more money than you, who've made a lot more money than you have figured things out, go talk to them, negotiate with them. Hey, I, can we hop on a zoom call? I'll give you 25% of my next sale, whatever the case is, be bold because what else are you going to do? Just sit there and not, I don't know. That's, it's not how I roll. That's, that's a great point. So, Hey, Mike, I may, I may not say it enough because a lot of times we get caught up in, you know, we're both busy and like, not, whenever we talk, it's just strictly about business, but you know, I appreciate you. Appreciate the way you challenge me. I appreciate all, all the different perspectives that I obviously don't think. And, but, you know, it's interesting to hear, you know, where, where you're coming from. So it, it does make, it does challenge me. It does make me think, think and see, try to see things in a different way. I'm looking forward to seeing you in Miami. You as well, Albert. Thank you. So appreciate both of these guys hopping on. And yeah, I, th- I think, I think Mike made a really good point. He talked about, um, talked about when you, when you ask people for stuff. And I think a lot of times we're all afraid to like ask for things at certain times. Cause you're like, well, I don't have anything to offer this person or whatever, you know, a lot for a lot of people, when you're asking for them for their help, it actually helps them because they get an opportunity to teach it for one. Mm-hmm. But uh, it also like, you know, sometimes it feeds their ego. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just the intrinsic reward of being like, Hey, I helped somebody I helped. I, di- I did a good thing. Yeah. So, you know, whenever you guys come from a position of like, I, I need something, you know, just think about how do I impact this person? How do I provide some value to this situation too? And it doesn't have to be reciprocated hundred percent because people are in different parts. Like it's all relative, right? right? We're in different stages of our respective lives. But the thing is, if someone asked me for help, you know, I, I think 
I'm entitled to like, I hope they at least go and take this and use it and make something worthwhile with it. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, I agree. Definitely. I, I love it when people ask me for, for advice. It feels so good. I feel so smart. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, Micah actually sent me a video or something. I don't know what he sent me, but I was like, bro, are you trying to like challenge me right now? Like, are you trying to, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not the only you, one. Think, you think my stuff isn't good enough? You know what I'm saying? Just no, send him. I, <laughs> I think he sent me a video or something. I was with like no context. Like I never talked to Micah like at all. And he just sent me a video. I was like, huh, kind of had the similar Albert experience. We've never, me and Albert have never talked about this, but he was like, I wonder why he sent me this. Is he trying to, I don't know. I don't know. It was just random. Do you know what he's referring to Micah? That? Um, I'm checking right now, actually. Um, what was it? What was the? Video? I forgot. I forgot. I would do that to you, Al. Too. It was a be your own, fun. maybe a be your own bank video from Drew. That was. I sent you two video. videos from him. Yeah. Why'd yeah. you send that? Why'd you send that? Um. Well, like, well that stuff's I, good, dude. That that editing's really good. Like, I wish you would put out stuff like that. Is that kind of a vibe? Beer? No, 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 not at all. I actually just really like the content Drew's putting out there, and I just wanted to share it with as many people as possible. So you were just one on the list. I'm okay, just being cool. honest with you, bro. No, please, please. I'm. I'm hey, it's better. Than, that's a better. So that's a better that, story. You took that as a disrespect. You know, just I to just be never. I just never talked to him. So I just was like, <laughs> why is he yeah. sending this to me? I guess usually when people send me stuff, that's generally the context. Or like, hey, can we edit it like this? Or you know, we do something like sure, this sure. when I come to the office. Yeah. No, but you also, I, I watch your little podcast clips too, you well, and you talk about a whole variety of things. And I really, <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts on it. I mean, I used to run philosophy club and I would really, I, oh. we really actually should touch base and, and talk. I feel like we'd have some, some really interesting perspectives to share, but come on would, out, Mike, would, be a would, guest on his podcast. Yeah. You got it. You, you'll double up two podcasts in one day. You'll hop on. Hell yeah, one, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah. Do it. It'll be fun. Are we having an LA uh, sales conference this year, Albert? Uh, nothing. I mean, nothing planned specifically yet, but yeah, I'm totally open to that. Okay. Well, if we get it on the calendar, you will. I'll be there. Automatic. Automatic. We'll do it. It'll be fun. <laughs> That'll be great. Yeah. You took it as a challenge to your manhood? No, no, no. I just didn't. <laughs> Listen, again, again, I had no idea. No context. <laughs> like, there was zero context, like. I didn't even know who that was. Like I never met uh, Drew. Drew. I, I never met him at that. I don't think I knew him at that point. I didn't even know his name. So I, I had no context. Mike is right though. Drew's Drew's content's really good. IUL, all the IUL and Vets market stuff. I'm enjoying it. And John, earlier we were talking about relatively relativity earlier. And you you had you said you were sharing a point earlier. I already that, forgot. <laughs> that re- is that important? <laughs> it was relatively unimportant to you. <laughs> Which part? <laughs> We were talking about you. You said you were reading something or you were listening to some podcast. It was a good. It was a good point, but, but I guess, yeah, I guess I, it wasn't that. I guess good. it was relative. We were having a conversation, and I was like laying down. It's like, yeah, yeah, I could say this. Forgot, totally forgot. About that. that was your. That was your moment. Your your M M&M and M moment. Okay. You dropped it. Well, Which part? Okay, well, we can't end on that anticlimactic moment. So. <laughs> There's one. There's one other one other funny story that since I'm since I'm back in the field now, like I'm just like I'm having a really good time. I'm I'm just finding a lot of things to be really funny. Like I'm I'm on the phone. I'm on the phones and I'm I have I have on a speakerphone. People people are hanging up on me. They're cussing me out. They're you know they're telling they're just they're they're blowing they're uh, blowing me off. All this other stuff. And I'm I'm just sitting there. I'm just, I'm just thinking like people must be watching me and be like, oh man, I wonder what's happening to this guy. And I'm like, for me, I'm like I just think it's funny because in terms of relativity. I've been in this business for over 15 years. Mm-hmm. It happens. Like that kind of stuff happens. Not personal. I've, I've never taken it personal. I mean, I, I take that back. I took a personal when I was brand new. Right. Because it, it seemed important. It seemed like it was a big deal. And then the most important thing now is just the fact that I'm like, as I go through this stuff, it actually keeps me entertained when little stuff like that happens. Because like the rest of the time, I'm just like dialing, dialing, and dialing. Like I need a little bit of a laugh. I, that's what that's what keeps me going. So it's just it's just entertaining. And like, I don't feel bad about it because- it's relative in the sense I have plenty of more leads that I can continue to have to work. I have, I'm not afraid to spend money on leads. I'm not afraid to invest into my business. So when other people, when I feel other people are, are like, oh, I don't know and do that, what I would do in that situation. It's also because you probably don't have enough leads. You haven't invested enough into yourself yet. You don't have that experience yet. So you're taking it from a very different place in your life than where I am now at this point. Yeah. Not mature, just more experienced. So hope that helps. Darren, Micah, appreciate both of you guys coming on and sharing. It's really great stuff. Hey, if you guys are if you guys are going to F 
the convention, fflconvention.com. Make sure that you guys register. It's coming up next week. And make sure you guys are registering on the Eventbrite for the Top Golf. Yeah. It, we'll, we'll post it on the group chat. Top Golf Wednesday night. See you guys there, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, the rest of the week, you know, the first through the fourth, fflconvention.com. Make sure you register. Tons of keynote speakers, tons of, uh, you know, great trainers. And, you know, look, wherever you guys are you're currently in your, in your position, in your career, in your life, you know, try to move that from a different point to a different point that's more advantageous to you and a little bit better for where you want to be. So look, it's all relative, guys. Hope that was uh, helpful to some of you guys and appreciate both you guys coming on. Yeah, it was fun. All right. Let's go out and be lead, guys. Thanks, Albert. Thank you. See you guys next week. Peace.